this $50 can of paint could end up costing you $5,000. Now, if you're wondering exactly how that could possibly happen, we're going to tell you a true story of a conversation that we had just last week that proves to you that when you start with something small and seemingly simple, it could end up costing you a whole lot more money than you ever imagined that it would. But if you don't know us, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. And this is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. What Hope was just talking about actually happened to us this week. Larry and I were standing in the kitchen earlier this week having this conversation about repainting the kitchen cabinets. I know. Ugh. Awful yellow color. Been that way for 12 years, guys. 12 years since we bought the house. It is time to make sure that this kitchen is homogenous, that everything in the basement, we're going to try to take it back to the mid to late 1950s when the house was built. So we're picking colors. And suddenly he said, well, what else are we going to have to do? And I'm like, well, you know, these poles, these poles, definitely they're not going to work. We have to replace all the poles. And after I said that, I was like, no, we need to talk about this light fixture because we put this light fixture and we bought the house 12 years ago. It hangs down too low. Larry and the boys bang their heads on it all the time. Oh, ah. It does not look 1950s. We want something that is closer to the ceiling and looks more like it is vintage. And then all of a sudden we realized, wait a minute, you got to replace the light fixture, got to paint the ceiling after you replace the light fixture. And after the ceiling is painted, we're going to have to put all new color on the walls. And after the walls are painted well, the floor is going to look really, really tacky. It also original 1958. And it's definitely got some wear and tear on it. But look at this. Look at this. Well, I'm, I'm not done. Come around the corner with me. Follow me. These cabinets, these cabinets actually are around the corner from those kitchen cabinets. For some reason, who knows why? They paint them, sort of paint them very badly, this ugly brown color. These cabinets need to be exactly the same color as the cabinets in the kitchen, which means, of course, that all of these poles, yep, none of those poles will work either. And that, my friends, is how a $50 gallon of paint turns into four or $5,000. Now, if this has ever happened to you, drop an I've been there comment in the comments. It's not uncommon at all to all of a sudden have a project that gets way out of hand very quickly and only because you introduced one new element into the conversation. There's actually a reason that this happens so frequently. It's called the Diderot effect, and it was named after a French philosopher and writer, Denis Diderot. Here's his story. In 1765, Monsieur Denis Diderot was a poor but happy writer. He lived in his small, humble home, surrounded by his books. He was a great writer and a philosopher, but he was flat broke. Catherine the Great, the Empress of Russia, heard of Diderot's financial troubles. She sent him a letter one day. It, it read something like, Dear Denny, I'd like to buy your library of books for $50,000. Signed, Kate. Not only that, he didn't have to give up the books. He could keep them, and she would pay him a yearly stipend to be the head librarian of his library. Suddenly, Duny had money. Excitedly, he ran out to buy the one thing he really, really wanted, a new robe. That new robe was the bomb. But there was one problem. Now everything else in his tiny room paled by comparison. Soon he was shelling out dollars like they were just plain old pieces of paper. The old, uncomfortable chair was replaced with a newer, more luxurious one. He got new pillows. He went out and bought a new rug and new slippers. Soon he was pretty happy until he looked at all the other stuff in his house. So that's how it starts. Yeah. You buy a couple of brand new things or you refurbish something in your home and then everything around it starts to look shabby, old, and drab. <laughs> so then each thing that you look at, you have to update and the pattern goes on and on and on. But there is a way that you can break away from the de cycle of accumulating more and more things. 
Let's talk about ways that we can wrestle control over that Diderot effect. One of the things that you saw in the video where I talked about the kitchen, it was evident that Larry and I had not set a budget yet for where we wanted this whole process to end up. Uh, we hadn't set that top dollar yet. And all of a sudden, because we hadn't, everything looked possible. We're like, ooh, we could do this and this and this and this and this. And then if we do those things, oh, we're going to have to do this and this and this too. And that's that cycle that you can get into. So set a budget ahead of time and that will actually help you to do what? To prioritize what is most important to you. I know we gave this a really fancy name, but I've also called this the snowball effect. <laughs> you know how you start out rolling a snowball and it's about the size of your hand, and then you keep rolling and rolling and it gets bigger and bigger as you go. Uh, that, that seems to me to be what we're really kind of talking about as well here. One of the things that you can do also in addition to setting your budget is to break your project up into smaller pieces. Yes. Now, I know personally, I can't stand to have my house in dishevelment <laughs> for a really long period of time. It drives me like visually, it drives me nuts. Larry has a lot more tolerance for that than I do. And the worst thing in the world to me is to have people come in for a visit and it's clear that like the kitchen's half done. But I think for me, that's a pride thing. And, and it's okay, y'all, to set your pride on the shelf and just look at your friends and say, you know what? We're about halfway done with this kitchen project. We got a lot more things in mind uh, before the project is done or whatever. Or just don't even mention it. Or just tell them we're trying to control the Diderot effect. There They'll you go. understand. They'll understand. <laughs> Another thing that you can do to help you overcome this effect is to be more comfortable with things not absolutely perfect. We can become a little more at ease with a little imperfection. After all, what really is perfect in our lives? The fourth thing you can do is to buy quality, not quantity. Sometimes what happens is like you start with that one thing and all of a sudden you're adding all this stuff that doesn't really need to be added in the first place because it's not any value to your life. It's not something you feel like you're gonna use for a long period of time. You're just getting it because someone else has it in their house, so you feel like you should have it in your house. <laughs> there are a number of reasons, y'all, that we go out and we spend a lot more money than we actually need to spend. But sort of paring down that list to what is the highest quality item that I can get that is gonna meet all the criteria of what I need this thing to do that's, I think, probably more what you should be looking for. As you do a little analysis of the situation, you might look at it and very critically ask yourself this question. Do I really need to do this? Or do yeah. I really need to purchase this improvement for my house or my yard or my garage or whatever it happens to be? Take a look at it really critically and say, do you really need to do it? One of the things that just segues, I think immediately, and obviously from this whole idea of buying quality is to really think about seeking minimalism. Now we've been really super honest. We are not, not. minimalist. No. And a lot of ways we wish that we were. Uh, our friend, Prepper Princess, she is a minimalist and she does it really, really well. Like her house looks very, very classy and it's very uncluttered. And Larry and I keep saying we're gonna have her in for a visit and like she can just <laughs> go through our house and tell us what we need to get rid of. Since I've been retired these last six months, I have been looking at things that I own and diligently trying to go about and purge them. I'm selling stuff on Marketplace. Yeah. I'm taking loads over to the Goodwill. I'm giving some things to friends. I even gave a few things to my sons. But there are so many things in our home that we can purge and get rid of. It just takes time. Yeah, and I think too, one of the things that's been super interesting for me, because he has really, he has sold stuff that he's owned for years. And he's like, I just don't need this anymore. It's it's freed up space, which for me, being a very visual person is very gratifying to walk in and not see clutter in a room. It makes me super happy. But the other thing that I've noticed is there's nothing that he has sold that he's come back and said, I wish I hadn't sold that. Uh, it's been more of a kind of a relief yeah, it is. than anything it is. else to get some of this stuff out of our house. 
practicing gratitude is a really good mindset that will help you in this process. You know, we had Father's Day yesterday and I had all four boys here and we had Hope's mom over. We had a really great time. Was I concerned about all the things that we have in our house? No, none of that was important. What was fun was the stories that were told and the memories that we were sharing and the laughs and the dinner that Hope cooked. Those are the things that are important. So as we look at what's really important, it's easy to start thinking about things that we don't have to spend money on. I got it. I think we should call it cultivating an attitude of gratitude. Ah, I, like I like it. That. Okay, so that's what we're going to call it, guys, from now on. Cultivating an attitude of gratitude. Here's another thing that we can cultivate, and that is mindfulness. We need to be mindful of the reasons that we're wanting to spend money or do these things that we're talking about. Is it to satisfy an emotional need? Is it to satisfy uh, a need to be more like somebody else that we know, maybe somebody in our family or our friends? Why are we doing this? We need to kind of take a look at that, and that will kind of help us to determine whether or not it's really necessary or not. Uh, th that sort of brings to mind something else we've talked about when it comes to just cultivating this mindfulness. Part of mindfulness is having that period of time that you wait before you push the buy button. And we've talked about that a lot yeah. on the channels, just the whole idea of a 24 hour waiting period at the minimum. Some people have even more than that. A lot of our viewers, and I mean several, have commented that they keep an ongoing like wish list and every 30 days they look at it and they are always surprised at the number of things that were on the wish list for 30 days that they don't want any more and it goes off Great. of the wish Great list. Idea. Yeah, it's important to keep yourself from doing the impulsive thing. And so Hope, I think maybe after 12 years of being in this house, yes. is it about time, time that we do some work on that kitchen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, but the $50 worth of paint is not going to cost us $5,000. That we can guarantee. No, no. So the Diderot effect that we've been talking about is something that can keep you trapped into an endless cycle mm -hmm. of constantly having to buy and spend money that maybe you don't need to. Now, as you shift your perspective, you might find yourself in need of some tools that will help you to break that see it, buy it, see it, buy it cycle. We did a whole video where we gave you a number of different tools, tips, strategies that will help you when you're on that website and you're really tempted to hit the big red buy now button. And these will help you to be able to once again, break away from that cycle. That video is right over there if you haven't watched it. Denis Diderot. Denny, did it roll. Now I'm really getting into saying it. That, yes, I took French in high school. Denny, did it roll. 